We had eight hours to kill for our morning departure on the Amtrak California Zephyr. Luckily, San Francisco has plenty of things to offer. Hey everybody, welcome to the Down the Road Travel Channel. My name is Will Van Winkle. At the end of September, we flew into San Francisco and took the BART, that's the uh, Bay Area Regional Transportation, or Bay Area Regional Train, I'm not sure what the uh, acronym is for, in the San Francisco area. We went from the hotel to right about two blocks from our hotel, the Hotel Triton. Make sure you check out my review of the Hotel Triton on, on our channel here. Um, my blood sugar had crashed by the time we had gotten on the train, so I needed to get something quick to get me through to lunch. And when we came out of the BART station, came up to the street surface, there was a C's candy store right there. Um, it's at 542 Market Street. So we walked in intending to get something like peanut butter cup or something like that, get a little bit of protein, a little bit of sugar, get me through to lunch. Uh, we bought four pieces of candy between the two of us and ended up walking out with about 10 pieces because C's is very generous on their samples and it's great stuff, uh, very delicious candy, um, and they're just super friendly and very, very generous with their samples, as I said. So after scarfing down a couple of pieces, we headed towards our hotel so we could drop off our luggage. We were very surprised to see that it was right across the street from Chinatown. We were right at the Dragon Gate. We we're ecstatic to find this out because we had planned on having lunch in Chinatown made it that much closer, that much easier to get to. It was on our on our list of things to do. So we checked it out, we dropped off our stuff, we went across the street, we looked for um, ZNY, I think it is. Uh, I'll, I'll get to that a little later on. Now we did have a limited time, we only had one day in San Francisco, and I say it's eight hours because minus time getting to, or getting from the airport to the hotel, checking in and sleeping, we really had about eight hours that we had something that we could do. Um, so first stop was Chinatown. Established in 1848, San Francisco's Chinatown is steeped in traditional Chinese culture. Here they have their own language, customs, social clubs, even post offices and hospitals. So the area draws more tourists, tourists per year than the Golden Gate Bridge. It covers 24 square blocks and overlaps through five zip codes. This is also where the fortune cookies that we're so familiar with were developed. And incidentally, if you ask the Hotel Triton upon check-in, they will give you one of those fortune cookies. When we were walking through Chinatown, there was a huge line outside the fortune cookie place. So, you know, if you have this option and you want to try one of those fortune cookies from the original fortune cookie shop, the best way to do it is if you're staying at the Hotel Triton, get one on check-in, otherwise you're going to be staying on the line for quite a while. The famous Dragon Gate, also known as Chinatown Gate, is located at the Grant Avenue entrance. It's interesting to note that due to overcrowding in Chinatown, the city of San Francisco established other Chinese areas in the city. Yet many of those who live in these areas will still commute to Chinatown to shop and or do business. Now, while the area is no longer strictly Chinese, there is also a Vietnamese area called Little Saigon about 11 miles away. Chinatown is integrated with many different Asian cultures, but there's, it's so big and so overcrowded that there's just many different little pockets all throughout the city. Chinatown has seen its share of hardship, though. From race riots in 1877, trafficking, smuggling, gambling, prostitution rings spanning from the 1880s through the 1890s, overcrowding, segregation into the 20s, plague from... Um, 1899 to 1904 and the complete destruction of the area in 1906 after a major earthquake which led to the Chinatown fires as well. This resulted in the Asian architecture that you can see today. Originally the area didn't have the pagodas up on top of the buildings or anything like that so now it's much more what you would think of when you think of China. So we walked from the hotel along Grant, looking at some of the shops, pagodas atop the buildings, and lanterns strung across the streets, until we reached Jackson Street. Then we made our way about a block, you know, give or take. Um, remember, my, my blood sugar was low, so Dana took the lead here, so I don't remember exactly how far it was, but we went to Z and Y Restaurant. It's located at 655 Jackson Street. We grabbed a table and ordered lunch. 
ZNY is reported as one of the best Chinese restaurants in San Francisco, and it certainly dis didn't disappoint. We had Kung Pao chicken, spring rolls, and steamed rice. We almost ordered the fried rice, but we figured the flavor profile of the Kung Pao would probably do better with the steamed rice. And I'm glad we did that because the Kung Pao was spicy, not too spicy, but there were many of the spicy chilies in it. So at one point we started to use the rice to restore our palate between bites, keep our tongue from going numb, um, rather than absorb the amazing sauce that was with it. The place was great, so if you're in the area, be sure to check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. From there, we went on a small excursion to look around and see the trolleys, things like that. We didn't get to ride the trolley because it wouldn't have taken us where we wanted to go. And since we had such a limited time there, it wasn't an extra that we wanted to give something up just to ride the trolley. Um, after some minor souvenir purchases in Chinatown, we dropped stuff off at the hotel again and caught bus number eight down to Fisherman's Wharf. Years ago, I lived in Palo Alto, California, right down the road from San Francisco. I was working for a law firm. The main office was in San Francisco. So I'd been to San Francisco a few times. I also played there um, at the Green Tortoise Hostel and a couple of house parties. And I'd been to Vish Fisherman's Wharf, but I've been to the uh, Ghirardelli side. I've never been over to the Pier 39 side. Uh, and that's the part that most tourists go to. So I didn't even know it was there. I had no idea we were about to go see wild sea lions that had pretty much been living on the boat slips for years. Fucker <laughs> 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 woke him up. If they weren't sleeping, they were showing off for the tourists. We had great views of Alcatraz in the background and the Golden Gate Bridge, as usual, partially shrouded in fog as well. Fisherman's Wharf was established in 1884 at the foot of Union Street, and it now stretches from Ghirardelli Square to Pier 35, with a couple of streetcars running through it. In about 2010, $15 million was pumped into the area in an effort to revitalize it and bring in money from tourism. And it looks like they did a good job because there were nothing but tourists there. Some food is okay, while some restaurants rely on the view. We ate at Bubba Gump Shrimp Company for the price and for the view. Most stuff is overpriced in the area. Bubba, Bubba Gump's, although is a chain, it is fairly priced. You'll notice I have no pics of the food. That's because it not only looked horrible, it tasted horrible. I had the shrimp scampi, and I'm not entirely convinced they weren't rubber prop shrimp. The waitress didn't take our order, somebody else did. She didn't bring our order, somebody else did. She checked on the table one time, and after waiting about 20 minutes for the check, it had almost been 40 minutes since we last saw her, I finally went to the hostess stand and have had them run my check. Uh, the view was great. We saw pelicans flying around, sailboats coming in and out. About, uh, we saw Alcatraz, the Golden Gate Bridge, but the food was not worth it. It was the worst. The scampi sauce, it was like garlic water. Um, and I couldn't even tell if there was butter in it. You know, scampi is like really garlicky, really buttery, but it was, should have coated the noodles. It should have coated the shrimp and it was just, Dripping. I don't even know what Dana had. Um, 
it was just that bad. Uh, if we ever go back to Pier 39, I will not be eating at Bubble Gums again. And I probably won't eat at any locations throughout the U.S. based on that one experience. The view was incredible. We were right out over the bay. We could see everything. But the food was just horrible and the service was ridiculous. The tourist shops are out of control at Pier 39. Uh, there was a left-handed shop, a magnet shop selling only weird items like magnetic bananas and cheeseburgers. Um, the police presence was pretty high, and considering so many people have told us how horrible San Francisco has become, it was very reassuring. But let me say that as with any large city, especially tourist destinations, you're bound to have crime. Just be alert, be vigilant, and don't advertise that you're from out of town. So don't whip out your wads of cash or your GPS. Know where to stay away from at night, and you'll likely be fine. Uh, the real test was the next morning though. When we left our hotel for the Amtrak bus, the sun wasn't quite up yet, and we had a little time so we could have had the continental breakfast, but with such little time, we opted to head out on our own. Uh, I was shocked to see an area with so many hotels that had very little open at 7 a.m. Most things didn't open until 8 or later, but we did find Noah's New York bagel shops at 100 Bush Street. Now this is a chain, uh, it's a California chain, but as far as I can tell, it is only in San Francisco. Dana got an egg and sausage sandwich on a sesame seed bagel. I got a blueberry bagel with cream cheese. While the photo makes the bagel look bad, it was great. It was decently priced, uh, especially considering the area we're in. And even though it's a chain, it's still a local chain. They open early enough for those who want, for some reason, choose to rise before the sun or those who had ob obligations to meet, like us. Uh, with the limited time, we were limited on what we could do, but because we both knew a little about the area from previous trips, we didn't have to pack everything into our short stay. And we did have a great time. Uh, if you have any tips for our viewers uh, or our next trip to San Francisco, please let me know in the comments below. Be sure you subscribe to our channel, and hey, while you're at it, share our videos with friends who might be planning a trip. It could help them. Uh, if you like the original music used in the background, be sure to check it out on your favorite streaming app or right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you down the road. Let's hit the road.